Welcome back friends. In this video tutorial we will be talking about Neisseria meningitis. We have already talked about Neisseria gonorrhoeae and this Neisseria meningitis again another part of the Neisseria species uh, and, and among this Neisseria meningitis is slightly different than Neisseria gonorrhoeae but in structure and other uh, feature uh, of culturing this kind of bacteria in a laboratory remains the same. For example this Neisseria meningitis again it's, uh, it's again the coccus right. So it's, it's a coccus. Let me write it's a coccus, right? Now, coccus means the bacteria will shape like uh, spherical or round, like this. And all the time, when you're finding this area meningitis bacteria under microscope, we are going to find some kind of half half bean shape like that. Just a kind of half bean, like 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 this. So half bean shape like structure, and they are surrounded by a kind of what you, what you can say the kind of LPS layer. And obviously they are pileated. So let me draw the pili. So they are pileated. So that means pili is coming out, which an extension of cytoplasm is coming out from the bacterial surface. So this is uh, how uh, they look like under microscope. So this is, this is, uh, this is a coccus-shaped bacteria, half kidney. So half bean, half bean-shaped bacteria. Okay, and they are pileated pileated so this part and these things are very similar to the Neisseria gonorrhoeae type of bacteria okay uh, bacteria and in this case uh, Neisseria meningitis is the one of the most frequent causes of the disease called meningitis you all know the disease causing agent for meningitis meningitis right now the meningitis they cause the infection with the Neisseria meningitis can also take a form of uh, fulminant meningi meningococcemia. It is also called meningococcemia because it is caused by meningococcus. And this Neisseria meningitis is also called as meningococcus. So let me write. They are called as meningococcus. Okay. And the disease meningitis is called as meningococcemia. So let me write meningo meningo coxemia okay this meningitis is called as meningococcemia because it is caused by meningococcus bacteria right and in this meningitis disease what we can see that intravascular coagulation circulatory collapse as well as uh, potential fatal shock so these are the different uh, phases of the disease right so it's a circulatory collapse circulatory collapse then it results in uh, fatal shock and obviously uh, intravascular coagulation intravascular coagulation okay and along with that fatal shock fatal shock okay so these are uh, the major kind of symptoms that we can see in meningococcemia or uh, the meningitis caused by this meningi uh, Neisseria meningitis bacteria. Okay, and usually this kind of infection is very common in winter and early spring and also favored by close contact between individuals. For example, in schools, institutions, military barracks and uh, other uh, places where people uh, can have direct contact with each other and usually this kind of uh, infection usually can spread via uh, what we can say air and the nasopharyngeal pathway now this Neisseria meningitis this particular kind of bacteria this bacteria is having the technique uh, called using this pili so pili is helping them for the virulence factor and using this pili they can adhere to the host cell and can invade the host cell and then finally there are several techniques that they can adapt to go against the host immune defense and obviously they degrade the host cells right so they can cause several rounds of different diseases okay and they are gram negative so let me write i forgot to mention the major parts they are gram negative in nature right so they are gram negative in nature gram negative in nature so they are gram negative in nature and as they are uh, gram negative in nature and there are very very few bacteria available which are coccus as well as gram negative and Neisseria uh, are one among them and 
and uh, this is the structure and this is the basic properties of this area and they are dangerous if you won't treat them they are dangerous they can be fatal right now in the future video we'll be talking about the infectivity of this area meningitis uh, thank you